Hey chatters, in this video, I'm going to be going over how to create a project in ChatGPT. I got to be honest with you, it's a little bit redundant when it comes to creating a GPT versus a project. The only thing I'll say is I guess a GPT can be more generalized. It doesn't need to be project specific, right? It can be for common tasks like creating social media posts or blogs, or if there's some sort of like standard operating procedures you need to write in a specific format. Great use case for a GPT. But let's say you're working on a specific project and you really want to keep all that project documentation and information in one place. I guess that's why you would use projects. Again, you can do that with a GPT as well, but we'll go over it anyway. It might be useful to you. The first thing we're going to want to do is come to the sidebar. When we open that up and scroll down, you should see this new project button. Let's click that. First, you're going to be asked, what is this project about? So we're going to name this Novatech. And now we're in the project chat. So once we upload everything in a second, you'll just see we can come to, if we come back to the sidebar and scroll down, you're going to see we have the Novatech project now. And then you can come in there and we can start to talk to it just like you would with ChatGBT. So choose your model, pick your tools, upload information, whatever it might be. The difference here, which again, how much different from a GPT, I don't know, is you have your add files and add instructions. Your instructions are those custom instructions that you would put in something like a GPT. So if I click this, it's gonna come up with a text box. So let me go grab that prompt and we'll stick it in here. I have a very long prompt that I made up that I'm not really gonna go through too much, but the idea here is you wanna give this project, you know, its role, what's the context of the project, what documents is it going to have access to? What is it supposed to be doing in terms of capabilities to support you, et cetera, et cetera, your preferences, guidelines, all that fun stuff. Once you're done with that, we'll click save. And now it has those custom instructions that it will use every single conversation. Next up, we want to add the project context, which is this add files button. So if we click that, you can see we can either click and drag stuff or add files. So let me just take a second. I'll drag these files into here. And you can see they're loading. I can delete them if I want. And then when we're done and everything's loaded, we'll be able to save it to the project. This is a little confusing. There's no save button because once it's loaded, it's already saved. So we can just X out. And you can see we now have all the project files. And then you just treat it like any other chat GPT, right? We can, for example, upload more files if we wanted to. We can also use our different tools, web search, a canvas, whatever it might be. But you can just now chat with your files. So I can say something like, I am Sarah Chen. Can you write me an email to my boss to give her the summary of this project? So it has all that information, and now it's giving me the email. It knows who my boss is because one of the files we uploaded is the team directory. It's giving us the status, our recent milestones, all this kind of stuff. So this is probably not how you want to write the email, right? So that's something you put in the system instructions. This is how you, I want you to write emails. This is the style I want, whatever it might be. But you get the idea here is, again, just pretty much like a GPT. You have some system instructions. You have some files you're uploading for context. And then you can just interact with this project in a little bit more of a refined, specific way so that you don't have to input the same information every single time. There's a couple more things I wanna go over, but before that, I just wanna tell you about the Synaptic Labs AI readiness assessment. Is your business ready for the AI wave? Find out in just three to five minutes with Synaptic Labs' AI readiness assessment. Our quick questionnaire analyzes your current AI capabilities and delivers a personalized roadmap for integration success. Plus, complete the assessment and receive a coupon for any of our premium AI-enhanced workflows, absolutely free. Don't get left behind. Discover your AI readiness today at ai-readiness.synapticlabs.ai. So if we come into Tools and we hit Deep Research, you can see here it now has this Sources button. So now I can click that open, and it has the web search, but I can give it access to things like my GitHub, to my Canva, to my Gmail, a bunch of other different things. And this is gonna allow it to go and gather information from those sources that are saved in a variety of different places. So similarly, again, if you have this project, you have these files uploaded, 
just a good way to center it in on the sources that you wanted to actually be looking at rather than it just using a web link. Lastly, if you want to rename or delete the project, if you come into it, you'll see these three little dots up here. We can click that and hit rename and we can just maybe say Novatech project and we'll save that and it will update. And then when you're ready to be done with a project, you can just come here, delete, make sure you're ready. It is gonna do it for delete it forever. And you hit delete and then it's gonna go away so that if you don't need that project anymore, it's taking up too much space, you can just get rid of it. One limitation I'd say for this is that unlike something like Notebook LM, you can't actually feed it just a web link as a file. So for example, if you wanted to give it your website content, like scrape your website, you can't put that in the project files and just have that as part of it. You would need to have it do a web search every time or go and grab the text from those websites you want and scrape it yourself or stick it in a document and upload. So that's a little bit limiting. And the other limitation, which is me just on repeat, is that this feels kind of like a redundant feature to me. It doesn't make too much sense to me why you wouldn't just create a GPT for your specific projects. I guess maybe you might have a ton more GPTs for a lot of different things, so it might get confusing, but it's more or less the same, if not less, functionality or control. So, you know, in general, I would probably use a GPT over this projects. But what do I know? Definitely leave in the comments if you're using projects, if I miss anything, if you have any questions, would love to hear from you. Until the next one.